Rajon Rondo is now entering his 12th season in the NBA, and it feels like a lifetime ago that he was orchestrating one of the best teams in the later stages of the last decade in the Boston Celtics. But since the dismantling of one of the original big threes, Rondo's career has seen him hop, skip, and jump from four different teams. And in each of Dallas, Sacramento, Chicago, and now New Orleans, he has seen a different playing role and varying levels of success. But now that he has returned from injury and been reunited with good friend and a player that he is very comfortable with in DeMarcus Cousins, Rondo has returned to some serious form. He is dropping dimes all over the court and recently broke the Pelicans franchise record for the most assists in a game with 25. And the Pelicans are playing well under his guidance. With Drew Holiday being able to slide to his true position at the shooting guard, and Davis and Cousins are thriving with a past first point guard. And with the phenomena of playoff Rondo, just how deep could they potentially go in the playoffs this season? This video will cover that question as well as providing a background history to Rajon Rondo, one of the most gifted passers and interesting players in NBA history. Rajon Rondo was born in Louisville, Kentucky, where he would attend high school for his first three years of basketball at Eastern High School. In his junior year, he would average 27.9 points, 10 rebounds, and 7.5 assists per game in what is probably one of the more busted stat lines for a high school junior that I've ever seen. As a result of this incredible play, he would transfer to Oak Hill Academy for his final year, a boarding school that had a strong focus on basketball and had produced NBA talent including Carmelo Anthony, Michael Beasley, and Kevin Durant. Here, Rondo would fine-tune his game as he was surrounded by fantastic teammates he would demonstrate his transcendent passing skills for the first time. In his senior year, he would average 21 points, 3 rebounds, and 12 assists a game as he helped Oak Hill to achieve a perfect record for the season. Rondo would record the second highest point game in school history, with 55 points, and broke the school assist record when he dropped 31 dimes in a single game. He also secured the school single season assist record and left Oak Hill with a serious impression. There was an athletic kid with incredibly long arms and an insane basketball IQ on the loose. Rondo wouldn't stop breaking records when he committed to Kentucky for his college of choice and broke the school record for most steals in a single season in his freshman year. But despite this defensive prowess, his passing, and Rondo's winning ways, his inability to shoot the basketball led many scouts to doubt if he would ever be able to see large success at the NBA level. But the Boston Celtics were in the middle of a rebuild and traded for the 21st pick to draft Rondo, as well as nabbing Sebastian Telfair to their roster in order to experiment with different young point guards. Rondo would impress for the Celtics in his rookie season as he split time with both Telfair and Delonte West. He showed glimpses of his passing and ability to run a team, but it was his defensive prowess that shone the most, as he averaged 1.6 steals per game in just over 23 minutes a game. After this promising rookie season, the Celtics made headlines when they traded to acquire both Kevin Garnett and Ray Allen in the offseason. In doing so, both Telfair and Delonte West were traded, leaving the Celtics to start Rondo alongside their big three and Kendrick Perkins. This was an instance of the cards falling perfectly into place for Rajon Rondo. The offensive talent of the three stars surrounding him allowed Rondo to effectively hide his inability to shoot and focus on finding teammates in rhythm for good shots. And as Rondo had proven in high school and college, this was something he was very, very good at. And Rajon would play an integral run in the 2008 championship run for the Boston Celtics. Rondo acclimatized to playing with the team over the course of the season and would provide incredibly consistent play in the playoffs. But the highlights came in Game 2 and Game 6 of the NBA Finals against Kobe Bryant and the Lakers. In Game 2, Rondo would drop 16 assists to help the Celtics to a victory, and in Game 6, he would have an incredible 21 points, 8 assists, 7 rebounds, and 6 steals as the Celtics closed the series out and won the championship. These performances would cement Rajon as the Boston Celtics point guard for the future, and begin the legacy of playoff Rondo. A mythical player that would turn up on the biggest stage, in the biggest way, time and time again. The next season, Rondo would average an incredible 19 points, 11 assists, 9 rebounds, and 2.7 steals a game in one of the most exciting series of the 2009 playoffs against a young Derrick Rose and the Chicago Bulls. And he would be a thorn in LeBron James' side throughout many playoff series, helping to eliminate him in 2010, and then having a 44-point and 10-assist game against him in the famous 2002 series en route to LeBron's first championship. But one of the golden ages of the Celtics and one of the best teams in NBA history would fall to injuries to Garnett and Kendrick Perkins at crucial times, 
and they would not taste the highest NBA success ever again after 2008. And ultimately, Danny Ainge would trade Paul Pierce, Kevin Garnett, and eventually Rajon Rondo as he acquired assets to prepare the Celtics for the transition to the future. Rondo would be traded to the Dallas Mavericks, where he would clash with head coach Rick Carlisle and infamously quit on his team in the playoffs due to disputes. This isn't the first instance of Rondo being hard to handle in the locker room. Rajon, by all accounts, is one of the highest basketball IQs in the league, and can sometimes think that he knows best, even when compared to the head coach. This attitude is obviously a no-fly in the NBA, and I think Rondo learned to adjust after his experience with Carlisle and the Mavericks. And since then, he has found success with the Kings and with the Bulls, as he was a player and fan favorite in both cities as he wowed the crowd with dazzling passes. But in Chicago, he was also praised by the young players as an amazing veteran and locker room presence. And by doing so, he has likely secured his place in the league for years to come. But Rondo is showing the whole league he is more than just a veteran presence this season with the Pelicans. He has come on strong to provide an assured presence for New Orleans on the court. Rondo has definitely struggled in shaking some of the rust from his injury, not playing, and adjusting to his new teammates. But over the last few games, he has really shown flashes of what he was and is capable of. And it appears that over these last few games, Rondo has made some further adjustments and has realized he needs to blend more into this team and allow for Cousins and Davis to run a lot of the offense through them as well. By doing this, the team puts more pressure on defenses than Rondo can by himself. And then, when Rondo is feeling it, he'll pull out of his bag of tricks and make passes that no one else can. In his game with 25 assists, Rondo was throwing passes that looked easy, but are in fact incredibly difficult and must be timed perfectly against NBA defenses. He was throwing passes to cutters on the baseline and through the middle, as well as to Davis and Cousins with amazing lobs, entry passes, and high passes when they had sealed off the paint. This is the Rondo I hope to see over the coming months. One focused on making the right play, the right pass in transition, and in the half court, regardless of whether or not it gets him an assist. This stat padding has been one of the criticisms of Rondo in the past, and at times it has been more than fair. If you can shed the stat padding, he will become an effective extension of the coach on the court, and his IQ is incredibly useful to teams. Rondo has become famous for knowing opposing teams' playbooks around the league, and has regularly been seen to immediately call out actions as soon as the point guard or coach signals for something. These kinds of things, commitment to his training and learning, and his general knowledge for the game make a fantastic player to have on a team to provide stability and veteran leadership. And the Pelicans will need this come playoff time if they make it. Most of their roster has hardly played playoffs, with Drew Holiday only playing in three series while fully healthy, and Anthony Davis only having one series under his belt, whilst DeMarcus Cousins has, hasn't ever played in the playoffs. The even-keeled approach of Rondo should help these guys if they make it, and the slower pace of the playoffs may favour the huge front court of the Pelicans. But first, they have to actually make the playoffs, and sitting in 7th seed doesn't make this a guaranteed thing. But injuries to both Utah and the Clippers have cut them down, and they sit four games back from the Pelicans in the standings, and it is hard to see how they will recover this lost ground if the Pelicans keep this level of play up. Boogie Cousins, Anthony Davis, Drew Holiday, and Rajon Rondo will only get better the more games they play together, and I can see them even pushing the Denver Nuggets for the sixth seed. And this will be the seed that the Nuggets, Blazers, and Pelicans are all desperately fighting for, as it would likely mean avoiding the Rockets and Warriors in the first round, the two clear best Western Conference teams. And the Spurs will likely be the third seed, and would pose a decent matchup for the Pelicans, as they actually have the big men to match Pau Gasol and LaMarcus Aldridge, as well as punish them on the offensive end in turn. It would be an incredible series to watch, and if Kawhi Leonard was healthy, I'm not sure if the Pelicans have anyone to guard him effectively. But the same could be said for both Davis and Cousins, and the Battle of the Bigs would be great to see the two return to the playoff basketball, as well as the potential return of playoff Rondo. Will he be able to pull out some of the insane games with over 15 assists, or perhaps drop 30 points on the defensive turnstile that Tony Parker has become? And then, once the season is over, I wouldn't be surprised if Rondo re-signs if the Pelicans manage to convince Cousins to stay long-term, as the two have a seemingly strong bond on and off the court, and continuing to play together will likely lead to this connection getting stronger. But for now, just simply sit back and watch the amazing passes of Rajon Rondo, one of the better point guards at passing over the last 10 years, and one of the best players at running a team still in the league. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to like and subscribe for more NBA videos in the future. 
and leave a comment below of what you think of Rajon Rondo and the Pelicans' chance of making the playoffs is.